There's more than 37 million people that have chronic kidney disease in the United States. Uh, a big chunk of them don't know that they have anything have, yes. wrong with them, period. Like, they don't know they have type 2 diabetes. They don't know they have hypertension, right? Uh, they're going to progressively get to a stage of kidney failure where, where they will need dialysis. If they're lucky. If they're lucky. I hope, yeah. I hope people are catching that. If they're lucky. Especially in other countries where you have to pay it out of pocket. Yeah, well, I mean, yeah, we're privileged uh, in the United States when it comes to if your kidneys fail, what's going to happen? Yeah. You actually have some uh, uh, nationally covered insurance, right? Medicare and right. Medicaid, uh, and you're, in, you're entitled to become an active beneficiary uh, under an ESRD entitlement and stage renal disease, disease, disease entitlement. entitlement. Yeah. So, but but yeah, it, you know, when I say if if they're lucky, um, you think about type two diabetes, uh, hypertension, high blood pressure. And let's call it a third of the country having one of these or both of these. Type 2 diabetes is one of the top 10 killers of Americans on its own. Wow. <clears throat> but it also is the number one cause of chronic kidney disease, which is also a top killer of Americans or uh, people in the United States. So top two killers, mm. diabetes or top 10 killers, diabetes, one of them. And then ESRD. Chronic, ki chronic, chronic, chronic kidney, kidney disease, disease is another one. Then if you talk about like blood pressure issues and vascular disorders. Hypertension. Uh, high, high, uh, uh, cardiovascular yeah. events, heart disease, things like this. This is also top 10 killers. So th just when you, when you talk about kidney disease, like there's a lot wrapped into it that it's affecting more than we know. I went to like high schools and uh, it's actually, it's, one of the things that I really like to do is educate. Well, I, I think I've always, even before dialysis, I've always taken what I've got and like tried to duplicate or, or share. Right. But, uh, with going to the high schools, we go talk to, uh, like career pathways in some cases or career fairs or job fairs, stuff yeah. like this with districts and stuff like that. And, uh, typically, the place where like workforce is really, really active is when I say workforce, like uh, workforce investment boards and job centers and things like this that are helping people with resources to either um, pay for tuition right. or, you know, soft skills, development, things like this, you know, get themselves to where they can upskill or uh, yeah, upskill yeah. or, yeah. you know, make a, a, a an incline and an, an uptick in their profession, right? So th the areas that are typically most active there are like urban areas, um, poverty areas, mm -hmm. low high school graduation rates, things like this. Um, and time and time again, at least in the schools that we go to, we find ourselves with a largely Hispanic um, and African American group that we're speaking to, right? And uh, we say like, hey, uh, how many of you know somebody with type two diabetes? And everybody's hand goes like up, like, like they know it. They, the kids know it, right? They know what this stuff is. Uh, how many of you know somebody with high blood sugar? Boom. How many of you know somebody who went blind from their diabetes? Boom. How many of you know somebody who lost a foot a limb, or yeah. a limb? Yeah, and you know most of them. Chronic kidney disease and less hands go up. Less hands. Somebody on dialysis and less hands. And then uh, somebody who uh, is a dialysis tech, one. Dang. One hand, right? But it's like, when, when I asked that question, do you know somebody who's diabetic? Everybody raised their hand. It, it really means that indirectly, everybody knows somebody who's going to yeah. be touched by that dialysis, <clears throat> but, by that dialysis <clears throat> technician. But these high school students didn't know at the time, just asking if dialysis and diabetes were kind of really, uh, no. they didn't know. No, no, no. Yeah, so. So your I, job was to put to it one. And I don't want to say that every person out there doesn't know, but for the most part, yeah, it's like 
delivering simple information. Yeah. We're not like making, you know, uh, medical policies or we're not creating new medicine. We're just talking about very simple things that everybody knows about, but doesn't know about. Like y'all know a diabetic. Did you know at least the chronic kidney disease is the number one cause of it? Did you know that, uh, people who need, uh, uh who have kidney failure need dialysis and without it, they would succumb to life, right? They would expire, right? Like no dialysis, no life. If, you, if you're at that stage. Two of my friends, not one, two of my friends, actually no, three, Jimmy, Jamel, and Julian, all letter J's. Mm. Thank God I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> you're like, no, no, no J. No J. But yeah, they didn't know. Like um, Jimmy and Julian were, they were slender. Mm. And they just collapsed. Type 1 diabetes? What, what type was there? 2. Type, they were type oh, wow. 2. That's crazy. Uh, one's African American, one's Filipino. Mm -hmm. Didn't have their annual checkup. They just collapsed. Yeah. yeah. Well, you know, the <clears throat> talking about the annual checkup, uh, and, and you mentioned one of them being African American, uh, there's kind of like anomaly. It's, it's like a quagmire, right? Like, mm. Why is there such a high incidence of high blood pressure among among African Americans? Um, and it, and it's like depending on the age of a male and female, they kind of show like malignant hypertension at different ages. Wow! But it's kind of standard almost um, in the United States uh, that there's high blood pressure in the African American community. And then again, that's one of the top two causes of kidney disease. Yeah. Uh, if you're in a, uh, African American demographic, um, you would find a lot of dialysis centers. Is it the lifestyle? Is it the, the so why I say that, you know, specifically with African American that it's a quagmire is because, okay, diabetes, type two diabetes and high blood pressure are both like predominantly, uh, lifestyle attributing. Okay. okay? But, with African American, there there is like an anomaly to where like even with children, like babies, having malignant hyper hypertension. Wow. So there's a lot of research kind of going into like what is it? You know, is it a is it a a genetic thing? Something in the DNA? Is it environmental? Um, you know, what exactly is is going on there? So I don't want to say that it's a hundred percent preventable in, in that case because I don't know enough about like that full etiology with the African-American um, demographic specifically. But when you, again, when you talk about type two diabetes and hypertension, like wh how, do you, how do you get it? Like most of us get it because we stop exercising, right. we stop being active, um, what sort of intake we have as far as um, processed and carbs and sugars um, and the quantities that, you know, we, we, talk, we try and talk about these things on musings in a way that you know again just part of life like we all like to eat we like to hey, i like to have whiskey right so you like your patties and your rice yeah yeah and uh <laughs> you know <laughs> you know so like when you talk about quantities right and, and i'll tell this story over and over about my wife the first time she cooked she took not just so some soy sauce but a whole bottle of soy sauce soy, a bottle of soy sauce and adobo. Put it in, in, a, adobo, in one dish right um, so yeah, we just, you know, we, we try and talk about those sort of things. Those are the, I think the subtle things in life that get us there, but also that could keep us from progressing to a point where we're in need of early care. How about this? Since you mentioned your wife, but it's not about her. It's about culture, mm. Hispanic culture, Filipino culture. Mm. We can't say no to food. Yeah. Could it be? Partly that. Imagine going to a house and you smell the kitchen. Yeah. You know you're going to have to eat, right? Yeah. You cannot say no. Yeah. Well, I think, you know. <clears throat> food and, you can, and you can't eat little because they'll see yeah. it as an insult. Yeah. I mean, food is, for many cultures, food is family, right? Yeah. Uh, food is the social time. Food is the bonding time. Food is love. Food is the love language, you know. Uh, and... It, it's one of the things like uh as i get older like i man i don't know if we can get to this age without regret but like i just find myself regretting so many things in life even like turning down 
meals with yes. certain people, right? You know, like, hey, oh man, she's so fucking annoying. Like, you eat, you eat, you, you know, like, yeah. I can remember these these voices <laughs> echoing in my in my head from my whole life of different people right. that would just, you know, again, at the time I'm like, oh my God, so annoying. But that really meant a lot to them. And like yes. you said, like, the um, rejection that you gave them yeah well the, the, <laughs> then you know at 46 years old i finally listen and start to make some travel and i went to the philippines how was that for the first time that was great i mean it was really really great um i'm glad i didn't get asked to eat everything cause, <laughs> did they make uh, you eat yeah i ate a lot of stuff oh. but but i didn't like <laughs> we didn't do it nothing too crazy or i should say nothing too adventurous maybe okay. i shouldn't say crazy um uh I didn't eat like street food, which Damn. When, when I watch on like other yeah. channels and stuff, I'm yeah. like, man, that's what I would love to yeah. go. Like, I don't know what do you call it. Blogging, blogging. Like yes, I love uh, to do a yes, travel and just yes. like, but then I'm like, oh, I don't know if my, I was just talking about my stomach, right? I don't know if my stomach can handle it. But like I, I, I learned through the culture and actually some of my employees that are based in Philippines. But after I went, I was like, hey, I need to understand the culture more. Uh, and they gave me a whole presentation, right? And one of the things was like, it was a whole slide on like how it's uh, it's uh, rude to decline food. And I was like, oh shit! <laughs> I was like, God damn it, man! Like I just I remembered all these voices uh, in my head through life of like I said times where I was annoyed from like so many reminders of you eat, you eat or maybe like bringing a thir second third really? plate, yeah. you know, like yeah. wanting wanting to like. I guess clean the whole buffet or whatever. There's yeah. more, Mike. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Uh, and and then also taking food home. Yes, that was the that was the other one that really surprised me. Is like you're supposed to take yes. the food home and like you're like the, it, it shows that you love it. But but <laughs> you know it's funny. Also, it's like on the other end, it's like I'm like oh shit, they're here. They're gonna take food home. Like certain people in the fat, like they're gonna before the party's over, they're gonna take food home. Right. right? I'm like I I remember that used to annoy me, but now I'm like okay, it's just culture, right? But as far as the the culture leading to obesity and things like that, I think yeah, hundred um, percent. There are, and and I wouldn't say it's like Filipino culture, Hispanic. Latino, it's it's culture of like an individual like household. Yeah, that could also be an yes. expression of a neighborhood or 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 a community in itself. Uh, so I I can think of time well a time where I was in the hospital and. Uh, a young kid was in the waiting room. He was like a really fat kid. Uh, ended up next, like the next, whatever, next bed from where I was at. And I could hear the conversation with the doctor and his mother. And, you know, long story short, it turned out that he had some slow gut, some abdominal pain. Uh, he had just eaten McDonald's, like 20 pack of nuggets nuggets or something like that and you know like a super size coke or i don't think they have it anymore right i'm not sure but uh the super size anyways but uh wow the, the doctor was like really ripped into the mom who by the way the mom and the kid were as about as wide as they were tall uh just really really fat fat um wide-bodied individuals um and that was you know she was like well work and like her, she had an excuse for it right it was a culture of convenience or fast yeah. food, right? So it's easier to get some fast food. Um, and and I, I'll tell you, like my son, he's 10, my youngest son. Mason. He, he loves McDonald's. And like every time we get it, like if I eat it, like it will just jack up my stomach. Like I'll pay for it, right? Yeah. And I always think about that kid every time. It's like, yes, that's exactly what was going on with him. He eat that food. <laughs> He was exposed to it so much, he, you know, his gut just stopped working. He was type two diabetic. Uh, and the doctor was ripping into the mom, like, this is not his fault. Like he doesn't buy himself these meals. You buy it for him. Uh, you're contributing to his chronic illness. That's going to kill him. Uh, and it was like, you know, next door listening to it, like poor lady, but at the same time, poor, poor kid, like he's the kid, he's the, he's in the car. Like I talked about, right. He's yeah. in the car for the ride not knowing that it's leading to uh, chronic illness.
Visit abbaeservices.com for fast medical transcription service. This podcast episode is brought to you by AB Music Creative.